hey what's everybody welcome back to a new video on the channel so in today's video we are going to check out once again squarespace seo this is going to be the second episode of this series that we just started so if you missed the first episode make sure you go back to the very first video where we talk about title tags and meta descriptions but if you already watched the first episode then you are all good you're already fully aware how to optimize your title tags and your meta descriptions but in today's video we're going to check out how you can optimize your pages so how can you create a landing page that is optimized for seo in terms of content in terms of images headings all of that is going to be covered in this video so if you are looking to create an optimized landing page for google or other search engines this is going to be the video for you so with that being said let's just jump into this tutorial and hopefully you enjoy so the first thing you're going to see once you jump into squarespace and if you're watching this video you probably have your squarespace website ready uh, but this is how your website is going to look like you'll have a preview of your website right here uh, this is just a template that we're going to use for this video here uh, the title is going to be youtube uh, website which is just a a, a title of the website itself and then you'll have plants and pots for your home shop now fan favorites and so on so this is just a template so please bear that in mind uh, but in this video we obviously want to create a page that is optimized for the search engines but also is optimized for users so we want users to have a good experience on the website while also providing some sort of value to the user and at the same time capturing them as our our clients or our customers whatever you do in your business you want someone coming through the door and actually signing up either for with their email or purchasing a product whatever it is we want to ensure that this page is going to be optimized for our user the first step is going to be to go over to pages on your website once you are in pages you can see all the pages that you currently have on your site uh, in this case we're going to create a totally new page so we're just going to click on the plus button and then we are going to start either with a page layout or a blank page uh, in this case i want to start with a blank page then you can just go ahead and name your your page i'm going to name this page youtube as a test once you have named your new page you can go ahead and go to edit and once we are in the editor you can see that this is a totally blank page so it can be quite confusing if you are not used to creating your own pages usually if you're using squarespace you are going to use the templates uh, but in this case we want to optimize our own page and just create it from scratch uh, so the first thing you want to do is just add a piece of content to this page uh, what you usually want to have at, at the start is going to be some kind of headline uh, or or a a picture that captures people's attention but also make them understand that the page that they are on is actually the page that they were looking for when they were searching in google so let's just find something simple right here i think i like uh, this one right here so what i'm going to do is just click on it and import it to our site and then we will have our very first piece of content on this page so let's say we are in our last episode we were a, a a company in london selling plants specifically targeting the london area so let's say this page is going to be for targeting people who want to buy pots for their plants so our target keywords could be something similar to buy pots london or pots store london or shop pots london all of these keywords would be relevant for our brand so what i would recommend you to do here in order to find out which keywords you should optimize for there are a ton of different tools you can use in order to find these keywords or you can just go onto google itself and search you can use the google keyword planner there are so many ways to find good keywords uh, but in this episode i'm going to cover uber suggest it's going to be a good starting point for you it is a free tool uh, so if you want some kind of starting point either go with google keyboard planner or just go with uber suggests so we're just going to start off with typing london plant pots or something relevant to your business so in this case it's going to be london plant pots and this is going to be in the united kingdom so we don't want to look at the u.s search demand we want to look at the united kingdom then just go ahead and click search and let's see what type of keywords we can find right here okay so we're just going to start off by searching for london plans and making sure that we're searching in the right country so for this one it's going to be united kingdom but if you are in the us you want to look the us search demand 
and if you are in Canada, I want to look at the Canadian search demand. So this will all depend on where you are located and who you are trying to target. So for London plans, you can see that there are 880 searches per month. The keyword difficulty is 48. Uh, this is a good starting point to kind of look at to reference how hard it could be to rank for these keywords. Pay difficulty is 99 and the CPC is, is pretty, not, not that high, but for, for the specific niche, it's, it's, it's relatively high. Uh, so looking at the search demand in May, obviously there's a huge spike, probably due to COVID, a lot more people are buying plants. Uh, and then it kind of like stabled out at a, a above normal search demand volume. But going from there, going down to the keyword ideas, we can see that there are London plants, London pride plants, London house plants, London plants delivery, London plants shop, which would be relevant if you have a, a actual store selling these pots. Because when someone is searching for London plants shop, they are not necessarily looking to buy something online. They are more or less trying to find something where they can go to a location where they can go into the store and actually have a look at the plants. So it will depend on the, the search intent of the user on what keywords you should be looking at. And we can double check this by just searching for London plant shop. And if majority of the search results are going to be directions to a local store where people want to visit, then you can clearly tell what the search intent is for that keyword. But if we search for London plant shop, the majority of the top ranking sites are actually e-commerce websites and not actual stores. Then you can tell that the search intent is that people want to buy online. Um, so it's a, it's a good way to reference. Jumping from there, we also have London nursery plants and London indoor plants. And you can see the London indoor plants has pretty high search volume but less than london plants but it's still very competitive looking at london nursery plants is less competitive and london house plants is also less competitive but does have high search volume so london house plants is going to be our starting point for this so let's just go ahead and copy the keyword we want to look at so we are going to try to target the london house plants uh, keyword so going back into Squarespace, we want to make sure that this is the main keyword that we are targeting in our first heading of the site, which is going to be a heading one. Once we have changed it to a heading one, people who visit this site through searching London house plants are going to understand that the search result that they have clicked on actually is going to meet their uh, search intent because it's really targeting and narrowing it down the targeting to the specific keyword. Jumping from there, we have a small tagline right here. You can add any type of content you want, your, your slogan for your company or whatever you do. So I changed this to, we sell the best plants in London with delivery the next day. Obviously you wanna put more time into this and making sure that you're creating content that is actually selling and appealing to your customers. But jumping from that, we do have the button, so make it. Here, we can change this to browse our plants. And then you wanna add the link to where you actually have your plants. So you can add a page. Uh, let's see what kind of page we have. Um, so this would obviously be our shopping page. I don't think we have a shopping page at the moment. So I'm just gonna link this to the same page that we're on. But what you want to do here is maybe internally link to another page on your site which has all of the plants listed uh, but in this case i'm going to keep it like this and then i'm just going to apply then we want to change the design or the background of this image as well because we want it to appeal to the people who search so we are just going to go ahead and change the background right here so just double click on the image and then you'll have the background uh, the format itself we might even want to make this smaller because if we make it large, it's going to be hard to see the content below. It's going to require you to scroll down. And users are very fast in today's world. Uh, people are on TikTok. They want things to happen in seconds. So the best thing to do is making sure that the content they're looking for is there as soon as possible. So making sure that this is a medium, we can see at least a preview of what's below. And now we haven't added any content here, so it's a bad reference. But if we had the plants listed down here, it would make more sense to have this as medium 
because you can already tell that oh the plants are down below so if i just keep scrolling i'll have the plants straight away or you can just have it as a small or even smaller but i think medium will be good for this example so jumping into image you want to pick an image that is relevant to your business and your keyword i'm just going to find an image right now and paste it right here uh, so I'll just do that right now. Okay, so I've just updated my picture to be more relevant to what we do. So this is a image of plants, indoor plants, someone watering in indoor plants. I don't have copyright to this image, so please uh, bear in mind. And you wanna have high quality images here, but what is important here is that you also, so you wanna make sure that your images are compressed to make sure that your website is as fast as possible. I would recommend you to use tiny PNG uh, you can drag any kind of file in here in most cases and I haven't had any issues so what I'm gonna do right here is just drag and drop the file or the image that I have on the website and let's see how much it can be improved okay so after uploading our image you can see that our, our image the same image that we're using on our site right now can be compressed and actually save 30% of space so this would make our website not technically 30% faster, but at least this image itself is 30% smaller than what it was. And imagine if you have thousands of images on your site, it's gonna take up a lot of storage and it's gonna take longer for your users to load those images. So just compress all of the images that you upload is gonna be totally worth your time um, and it's just gonna save your website performance by a ton. Images are some of the biggest elements on your site and if you also have videos, that is gonna be a whole nother level uh, of files that will take a, a, a long time for your users to load. So we're just gonna go ahead and download the new optimized image. And now when I replace the image, you can barely tell any quality difference. Uh, and this picture isn't the highest quality either, uh, but at least you can tell that the image quality itself is still very high. So as you can tell now, we updated the picture. It's about a bit hard to read the text, which is up here. So you want to make sure the users can clearly read everything on the site. What we can do here is just go ahead and go back into the image itself, go down a little bit and add the overlay opacity. Uh, and I think that will make it a bit more clear. So let's add it to 50. You can also change the color of the text itself, but I think this is a good starting point for now. So once that is done, we want to go ahead and add another section to our page. And in this case, we're trying to sell plants. So the best case scenario for us here is gonna be for us to actually list the products that we have. So going into products and going down here and looking at what we have, probably this section right here is gonna be a good starting point for us to start. So I added in another section and as you can see, we have a new title to optimize, we have new content to add. And we also have the products we want to add and also shop now. So from here, we can perhaps change our heading and as you can see this is going to be our heading two or heading one and then we have our heading two so now what we can do is try to focus more on the keyword that we're trying to rank for but also making sure that it's relevant for our users so here we can add something similar to um, check out our new unique plant in london So what we do here is we still have the plants keyword and we still have the London keyword. So Google will be able to tell that this page is still about plants. We're still talking about London. So it will make those connections between the words and, and make the distinction that this page is still relevant to the keyword itself. Uh, London house plants. So perhaps our new unique uh, house plants in London. Then you want to go ahead and create your new text again or additional text for the paragraph itself. And here we want to add on to our keyword itself. Perhaps we can talk about our business and the house plants that we sell and what's unique about our business just to add that additional content uh, to the page itself. So I'm going to go ahead and create this right now and then we will be back once I have created this text. So I've just updated this text right here. So make your interior space look and feel good with our range of indoor plants from mood boosters, the air purifiers, browse or insp inspirational indoor home plants in London with delivery within 24 hours. That makes sense. And if I was a user on this page, I would feel good about this page. It gives me a bit of context the delivery within 24 hours another selling point uh, so all of this is good 
But what the user is looking for now is they want to see what kind of products do we have. So once we have completed this section, we want to make sure that we update the product images here to really reflect the products that we have with good quality images. And at the same time, remembering to uh, compressing these images to ensure that the website speed is still high. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to update these uh, images itself because I don't have any product that I sell. But we can go ahead and click on the edit button right here for the image so I can walk you through what we can update for these specific images. So as you can see right here, this is going to be a product picture. So let's say this was a specific plant we were selling and the plant was called YouTube Big Giant uh, Blue Plant. Uh, that is the name of the plant itself, let's say. So you wanna make sure you update the file name, which is gonna make it more relevant when people search in Google. So when people do image searches, and if you ever used image search on Google, when you search for uh, anything and look for images, what Google is doing is looking for the file name and also the alt tags of these images to determine if you should rank in the image search. And this is specifically important if you're selling products that are more visual, people want to see the image, and once they see the image of the plant itself or your product, they can click on that image to get taken to your page. So it's very important that you take into account your alt tags and also the file name of the picture itself uh, to ensure it kind of reflects what's actually on the picture. Once that is done, you can go ahead and click apply and then that is going to be done and you want to do this for all the products that you add. Then you will have the shop now button that's still relevant. It's, it's a clear call to action for the user that they should click here to shop now. What you should consider when you create this landing page is that when you have a user on your site, you kind of want to uh, see them as a kid and you're, you're grabbing them by the hand and kind of leading them through your site. Uh, they are following your directions and you want to make sure that your directions on your site are very clear so so even the kid would understand how to navigate the site itself so we're doing this currently by either browse our plans that will take you to the shopping section of our site you can read more content on 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 what we do then you have the product here which you can also link directly to the product page and then you have the shop now, which makes it very clear for the user that they should click here to see more of the products. But moving on from that, we want to add more content to our site, because in my opinion, this is going to be fairly low content for the keyword we are trying to rank for. So just to give you a, a good overview of what the keyword looks for, if we go ahead and search for this keyword, we can see that London House plants which I should have done my research beforehand and, and understood that this is actually a, a brand. This is a branded keyword. When people are searching for London House Plants, they're specifically trying to reach this company, which is called London House Plants. Uh, but let's just take a look and see what they have on their site. As you can see, this site is not very optimized. So if this wasn't their branded keyword, we could actually optimize our site more, add more content, add more value, make our design better, and outrank this company in the organic search. Uh, there's not really a lot of content. There's no footer right here. I don't like this design at all. So it's, it's definitely not a lot of competition for this specific keyword. But what I recommend you to do is Google your keyword that you're trying to rank for. Look at who is ranking number one, how much content do they have, uh, what kind of content do they have, do they have a lot of images, do they show the product directly, uh, how much content, it, just take a look at how they structure this, their site and figure out what can I do that is better than them and how can I ensure that our site is going to perform better than their site. Okay, once we have done that, we can continue to add on to more content because now we understand better on what our competitors are doing. Perhaps we also have our local stores. We want people to be able to contact us. You can go ahead and do that. Maybe if you're doing, uh, if you have a restaurant or if you do photography, you can add your reservations. You can also add your newsletters. So if people maybe want to go ahead and sign up uh, to, to your newsletter right there. You can add your socials. 
you can add your images, quote, text, video. This is about what kind of content you want to add to your site. What I really want to stress here and what is going to be the most important for your site is that you ensure that you have the high quality content directly on the site. It's easy accessible and it's easy for people to navigate, uh, navigate your site to understand where they should go on the site itself. What I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and add some more text content on this page. So we are going to go ahead and add some text. In the text, I want to add something that looks fairly good. So something similar to maybe this. Then right here, as before, we wanna make sure we have something similar to our keywords and still relevant to the user. Uh, so maybe new plants uh, every week. And then you can go ahead and say that we uh, have new deliveries on plants every week, this and this and this. These are the value that we bring you as a, a customer at our brand. And essentially it is as easy as that. Uh, the main point I really want to stress here is that it's super important that you do the research about your competitors before you start creating your page because you want to have a good understanding on what your competitors are doing for the specific keyword that you're trying to target. And let's say we want to go ahead and target another keyword again. I wouldn't recommend you to target that keyword on the same page unless it's fairly similar. So if you have a keyword such as London house plant delivery, perhaps you can include that as well on this page because you can kind of uh, clump things together that are fairly relevant. But if you want to target uh, London pots or London uh, pots for plants, whatever the keyword is, you want to ensure that you create an additional. So let's go ahead and click save here. You want to make sure you make an additional blank page. And this page can be called pots or uh, London pots. And then just update this for reference. And this way you have a better understanding of what pages are targeting what keyword and what kind of content you should be creating for that page. So when you have your page talking about London plants, people are not necessarily looking for pots. But if someone is searching for London pots or plant, plant pots or whatever it is, you wanna ensure that the London pots page is targeting that keyword and meets that search demand by talking about that topic. But that is gonna be the general rule of thumb you want to use when you optimize your Squarespace pages. Obviously there are a million different ways you can optimize your website and create your pages but these are going to be the general guidelines that you should follow when you create your pages. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I try to answer as many questions as I can. And if you want me to talk about any specific topics in the future, you can also leave that down below and I might just make a video on that. But that is going to be for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please make sure to leave a like on this video. And if you didn't like the video, please make sure to leave a dislike. Uh, if you want more videos like this one, also make sure you subscribe to the channel. But that is going to be for this video and I'll see you guys next time.